Is everyone just normal? Uh, yeah. Are you? Uh, good, good, good. I'm doing fine this morning, Seth. Um, I know it's 10 o'clock, so we're going to go on and open up this morning. We'll get all the ball leaders in the sound this morning and run face and leaders in the prayer this morning. Is our second skip before we start? Is our secretary on this morning? I am. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, little time of Bethlehem, how still we see the light above the deepest and dreamlessly the stars, the silent stars go by. Yet in the dark streets shine it the everlasting light. The hopes and fear of all the years are met in thee tonight. Oh, okay, that's it. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed up. I missed up. I am so sorry. Okay, thank you, Mother Bob, for the song this morning. We know you have it in your heart. Yes, we so have it. Okay, to come into your presence, God, at this hour the Lord, to worship you, God, to study the Son of the Lesson, God. In fact, in your north, and God, to all this into the Son of the Lesson, this morning, Lord. Because now the Son of the Lesson teach, God, and know her face, from the crown of her head down to the toes of her feet. Lord, I need you to have the wisdom and knowledge, Father, and she come forth, even before you go, Lord, open up our spirit to ears, Lord. So we can understand this Sunday school lesson this morning, Father. We bless sit everywhere in rest homes and hospitals everywhere. Although the line on their better reflection, God, Father. Teach us how to pray and things to pray for. This prayer I lay before thee this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Now we're going to turn it over to our Sunday school teacher this morning. Trustee Wood this morning. How are you this morning, Trustee Wood? Good morning. I'm doing fine and I hope everyone else is. Yes, so far so good. Thank you, Lord. Our, mess, our lesson for today is from the book of Luke, the first chapter, verse 57 to 66, 76 to 79. And the subject is Zachariah redeemed. And as we, <clears throat> as we look at this, this lesson, we remember last time we left, Zachariah was mute because of his doubt. But this lesson, we're going to see some things different. And, and it starts out with saying, that, you know, at this time, by now, Elizabeth waiting was over. The time had come for her to give birth to her to a child, and it was a boy. And they said her, her relatives and neighbors Seeing that God had showed, had showered her with great mercy, they rejoiced with her. They were happy for her. And then it says, when the baby was eight days old, all the relatives and friends came for circumcision ceremony. That was something they did in those days whenever the child was eight days old. And as they came, they all just assumed that the baby's name would be Zacharias after his father. And they started calling him Zacharias. Well, and Mother Elizabeth said, no, no, he must be named John. He is to be called John. And they said, what? Have you lost it? And she, they said, there's no one, not even in your family, by the name of John. And, and that's not the way we do it, so you know you are. And and then they said, but Elizabeth stuck to it. She said his name will be called John. And she, so she said that they looked at Zacharias, although they knew he couldn't speak. So they made some sign language and said, you know, Zacharias, 
asked him what he wanted to name. And Zachariah said, he wrote down there. He motioned for a tablet, like, give me a tablet to write on. And he, and he, he wrote on that one, John. His name is John. And <laughs> to everyone's surprise. And then instantly, he could speak again. And he began to praise in God. Uh, this, you know, this put fear in the people. <laughs> they, they knew something different was going on. And it said fear fell upon the whole neighborhood. And the news of what had happened spread throughout the Judean hills. Now, uh, it said everyone who heard about it, they were thinking to themselves and they thought long and hard and said and asked themselves and wonder what, what this child would turn out to be. It is something different about him. For the hand of the Lord is surely upon him in some special way. I mean, when they looked and saw that when Zachariah wrote the name John and he could speak, that confused them and it put fear in them too. And he said, um, uh, Zachariah was, was uh, prophesying over John. He said, he declared that John, to John, that he shall be called the prophet of the high and will go ahead of the master to prepare his way. And it says, uh, um, so you tell the people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sins. And, and through the tender mercies of our God, God's sunrise will break in upon us. And he says that shining on, and it's going to break in, it's going to be shining on those in the darkness, those sitting in the shadow of death, then showing, showing us the way, one foot at a time, down the path of peace. Now, as we look at some of this stuff, we're going to look at Elizabeth first. Now, she was an example of a strong woman. She would not be swayed by others, but she stood firm upon her faith conviction. And, and it, it takes strength to hold firm when there are others that tell you, you're making the wrong decision, and, and, and I don't support what you're doing. Uh, that's not the way it used to be. And, and, and uh, I support the old way, the usual way. But, you know, as we live in this world, there are going to be times when we would have to defend our own choices. Now, Elizabeth said no to those who would have her name her child, Zachariah. She said no. Uh, uh, his name is going to be John. And, and, and at first, they, they felt that it was not her place to name him in the first place because they said that was something that the father did. So they, they turn to, that's why they turn to John. Now, somebody asked, somebody wondered, you know, if you wonder, how did Elizabeth know the name since Zachariah hadn't spoken to her and there was no indication that an angel had visited her? But the way he wrote down things for the onlookers, for all the neighbors, for the other people, he had no doubt written that down for Elizabeth long, somewhere along the line during her pregnancy. He had already uh, given her, and he probably wrote out the whole thing, all of the prophecy and everything to Elizabeth. Elizabeth knew, and she said, no, his name is John. Right. Looking at Zachariah saying, what do you think? What do you think? He could hear him, but he couldn't speak. Uh, what do you think? And see, they first thing they were saying, well, she, Elizabeth done got out of, she, she done got ahead of herself. They said she, um, she wanted to change things. So first of all, she's out of her lane, so to speak, because here she wants to name it. That's something the father does. And then not only that, she wanted to give him a name that not even in the, in the line nowhere. That's right. And, thought, and some of them said that, oh, she's taking advantage of now because John can't speak, so she's taking over. And, and you know, they had all kinds of stuff against them. They had no, nobody knew. They didn't know what they knew. They didn't know what Elizabeth and John knew. But they were saying, they gave Elizabeth a hard time saying, she she's out of her place. She's out of place. 
that's John, that, that's Zachariah's duty to name the person. Mm-hmm. And Zachariah couldn't speak, so they said she, she took over. She was boss and she took over. But as I said, there's going to be times when we're all going to have to bend our choices. Because it ain't going to always be an easy thing. Because yeah. somebody, so when you make a decision for the Lord, you're going to be buffeted. You're going to be on, you're going to be pushed on every side. And you're mm-hmm. going to have to make up your mind whether you're going to stand firm or you're going to walk alone. That's mm-hmm. right. And then, uh, they, like I said, they felt like she was taking over. So, you know, and, and as it said, so many of them want to know. Well, uh, well, and see, they didn't hear about, they didn't know an angel had visited Gay, uh, uh, Zachariah. Didn't know if one would have visited Elizabeth. But we don't read in our lesson today, it doesn't say that he visited Elizabeth. It said he visited Zachariah while he was in the temple. So Zachariah had to write all this stuff down to give to Elizabeth so she would know. But once she knew, she said, "Uh uh-oh, his name is going to be known. And no matter what, I'm going to stick to what the Lord says. And his name, he will be called John. That's right. And, um, and, and um, what he wrote down for the people, he he no doubt has written it down for Elizabeth all, somewhere along some point in her pregnancy. He he must have written it down about the visit. He must have written down the prophecy. And she was going to make sure that her son is named in accordance with the prophecy given to her husband. So he had to have written it down somewhere along the line and gave it to her. And then as we look at Zachariah, now, you know, Zachariah was having a, having a hard time at first. When the angel appeared to him in the temple, he like, what, what you say? As old as we are, Zachariah had been, they had been through so much that he had long given up kind of hoping for the sun. It looked like it was going to be too late because they was already old. And so, but that moment, he had a moment, had his moment of doubt. But when the angel first gave him that prophecy, but he now understands, and he ain't going to let nothing stop him from living up, from lining up with God's will. He said, I might be blind, but now I see. Now mm-hmm. you see how God has loosened his tongue. Uh-uh, no, he ain't going to let nothing line up with that. And once he was able to speak, he offered praise to God, not just for the gift of a son, but for the role that his son would play in history, the role mm-hmm. he would play in Israel and in, in, in teaching the people. And, you know, it was, in those days, it was a tradition where that if the father was a priest, the son would be a priest. And um, that's the way it usually failed. But, see, in this, Zacharias probably wanted John to follow in his footsteps. But he also knew John had a special calling on his life. Mm-hmm. John was not going to be a priest. He was going to be a prophet. Mm-hmm. And God had already decided that from the get-go. And, mm-hmm. and uh, Zacharias would love to have had him follow in his footsteps. But he wasn't about to interfere with what God was doing. And that was that's right. And he had already known what it was like to disobey or to doubt God. So he was going to let John do whatever God's calling on him would do. And he said, and he offered praise, and, and he was thankful. He said, not only have I got a son, but, but this thing, my son is going to play a major role for the Messiah. And and he says, uh, 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 I know that. And, and the community probably was saying, you know, everybody, they were just expecting John to, you know, expecting him to be a priest. And first of all, they were expecting him to be named Zachariah. But, you know, as I read, in those times, people didn't have last names. They just called them uh, Zachariah, John, or Luke, or whatever. You didn't see last names. And if they had named him Zachariah, you just think now, he would have to be Zachariah Jr. or Zachariah III or whatever. But when you name the way that 
the way that they were doing, it would be Zachariah, it would be John on a Zachariah. Instead of naming Zachariah Junior or Zachariah the second, they didn't do stuff like that in those days. So they named him John, son, John the Baptist, son of Zachariah, and people could understand that. But as he, he was praising God, he offered the praise to God for the gift, not only just the son, but this, this, this son has got an important role to play. This is really great. And, and you know, and as I said, he, the people in those days, if your dad as was a priest, and, and so you had a lot of privilege. Those who, who parents were, whose fathers were priests, they had a lot of privilege, education opportunities, and just a lot of things that the ordinary people didn't have. But, and I'm sure Zacharias, the community felt like he should be a priest. And Zacharias probably felt that way to a certain extent. But he wanted, uh, uh, he wanted him to follow in his footsteps. But Zachariah learned the hard way that, uh, uh-uh, uh, you don't, you don't, you don't buck at God. If God say do this or do that, then that's what you do. That's even right. If it, even if it means that it's different from anything else. That's right. Because they looked at this and from all the time, they had not had this situation to come up before. All before, when people went on the eighth day, they went to the ceremony, the circumcision ceremony, and then that's when they named their, their son. They, this had not happened before. They could go, they went there, and they knew they were going to name their son after the father and, and, and move on. But this was a whole new ball game. First of all, Elizabeth showed up saying she was, she was telling one group what that person, uh, what his name was going to be. Zacharias was talking to another group. Was, no, he wasn't talking to the group. He was with another group, and they they went over and asked him, "So, what are you think about?" And that's when Zacharias asked for a tablet. He wrote the name, said his name is John. That's mm-hmm. when his tongue was loose. And so, you know, after that, you couldn't tell Zacharias. You know, you couldn't tell him nothing. And this what was she was fine. I admire her. She stood on her own. On the word of God, she said, whatever I'm not going to. She said, he's going to be named John. That's what the prophecy was. That's what he told my hood. And I'm going to stand on that. They they tried to bring her down, but they couldn't. She was a strong woman, and I admire her. In this life, we all got to be strong. Because if we're not, sooner or later, the enemy going to bring us down. And it can be very hard to get back up on your feet once you've been knocked down like that. So we, mm-hmm. while we're up on our feet, we have to stand firm and do what the Lord said. You see, no that's, matter what we get, right. there are going to be times when things ain't going to go along as usual. Like we mm-hmm. used to say the same way, it may be different. And we're going to have to seek God and discern and find out if that's coming from God. And that's and, and, right. And then, you know, we talk about the people in the community. Like I said, they didn't know about the, the angel visiting and prophesying to Zachariah. They, they knew it all. They knew how things used to be. And, and they weren't ready for a change. So they did not know about what had gone on. Zachariah couldn't tell them, and Elizabeth didn't tell them. And that was good. You just don't tell everything. They would probably may not would have believed it anyway. That's right. They, they thought it was a, was something Elizabeth was doing on her own. They thought she was, uh, you know, she had taken advantage of being able to speak and Zacharias couldn't. So she she just uh, and that they just kind of gave her a hard time, and, and, and it would happen. Saying that you know the, the community, the people in the community, her neighbors, her. Reginald said, you know, they just thought that she was just out of line. And, and she, they said, now, Zacharias is not even in the family line. I mean, John is not even, nobody in our family line named John. Now, where you get that from? They figured that was something she had cooked up. But when the sudden return of Zacharias' speech and his praise of God, you know, that made the community know that there is something special. 
not just about the birth of John, but also what he was brought to do. Mm -hmm. John, the forerunner of the Messiah, mm -hmm. the one who would prepare the way of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we know that as we as we go along, you know, you're used to doing things one way. But then when something comes up, something changes, like for instance here. And you got to know where it's coming from. First of all, you got to know the scripture. So you got to know, you got to know the word. And you got to know the voice of the Lord. You only know that by staying in the word, reading the word, uh, doing the word. And, and you, you will stay in, in the word. But you got to know this so that when that, when that, just like Gabriel appeared to Zachariah, well, if, if an angel appeared to us, we got to know if word that comes to us. Don't have to be a figure. Don't have to be a picture. But if the word comes to us, we got to be to a point we know where that word is coming from. Cause every word that comes to you ain't coming from God. Mm -hmm. And so you you got to have discernment, so you know. And you know when when you read the story of uh, when Jesus was tempted uh, in the wilderness. Now he could have used anything to whip Satan, cause he was, but he used scripture, and that's what we need to know. He knew the scripture. He studied the scripture. He knew it, and that's what we have to do, cause there's so many times we gonna have to use scripture to fight. Because we're not fighting necessary human beings or persons that you can reach out and touch. No, we're fighting evil spirits uh, and, and everywhere. So we got that know the word, use the word, and keep the word in in our heart. Because we don't know who we're going to need it. And you see the people that, and that fear came upon the people. And they wonder what they had to do with it's like, did I see what I thought I saw? Did I hear what I thought I hear? And, and it's like, what, what has just happened? The people were, they were confused because, first of all, here they were dealing with an unusual situation where the father couldn't name the son, the mother named the son, and the mother told him what the son named was, and the mother would not, she would not be. She said that's what the name going to be. They were confused because, and the, but they didn't know about the visitation of the angel Gabriel visiting uh, Zachariah in the temple while he was doing his, his priestly duty. They didn't know about none of that stuff. And like I said, Zachariah couldn't tell him, and Elizabeth didn't tell him. And, and, and uh, you don't need to tell everything. Some things you just hold to God give you give you to go ahead and tell this or tell that. And he yeah. said, and so therefore they couldn't, they didn't know about it, so they weren't to blame for everything. Because if they had known, then they might, they might would have been felt different, or they might would have been worse, I don't know, they might would have said, I don't believe it. But the thing about it is they didn't know it, so they can't be blamed for everything. But, but they were thinking, but they knew something was different about this, they knew that. And just as soon as Zachariah wrote the name. His name is John. I mean, his tongue was loose. He could speak. And they knew that for a while he had been mute. And when he he could speak, they became afraid. They, you know, something special about this. This is not the way she, this is not like it used to be. Something special is going on here. But they didn't know exactly what it was, but they know something special was going on. And they knew that. John was a special person. They knew mm -hmm. something about his birth. It was just different. And then they, um, Zechariah prophesied and said, you know, he just praised God. And he said, John's going to be the father. John's going to be different. I would love for John to be a priest following me. But whatever calling God has got on his life, I want him to live out his calling in the way that God would have him do. Mm -hmm. And that that's the way he wants us to 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 give out our call. We all got we all got something to do. We got different jobs. He prepared us for different to do different things.
but it takes all of us. We are, or it takes all the parts of the body to make a home. The body needs, the body of our church needs all of us. Every one of us got something to offer. And, and, and it needs every one of whatever we got, it needs all of that to help out with the church. And we, as we go along, we find out we're living in a time when we really and truly do need the prayer, the support of, the, of each other. Whether you are the deacon or the minister or the mother or the usher, whatever, we need each other. Yes. And we, we need each other. We need each other to pray with us, for us. And, and, and we just need to be together like a community here, supporting our uh, things, the things that is of God. But as I said, these people here, they didn't know about the, the visitation to Gabriel, or to, they didn't, Gabriel visiting Zachariah. They didn't know about that. So I can't, you can't blame them for everything. But they, they had a hard time trying to convince the little she needed to step down from the street. She was not bend, she was not sway, and she just held her to, that's what it ain't gonna be. And she had gone by the prophecy that Zachariah had written down evidently, and somewhere during her place had told her about, uh, about the visiting angel, told her what they said his name gonna be. And, and I'm, I'm sure she was probably prepared for some of that opposition, cause she knows that's what they were gonna do. They were gonna start opposing her. They were gonna try to shut her up until she's not alive and all that stuff. But she's already prepared. Nope. His name is Je- his name is gonna be John. Nope. He will be called John. And, and she didn't back up, not one. They didn't sway or nothing. She said, no, the word is out. I'm telling you now, so his name is gonna be John. And that's, and that's fine. So that's my father and his name is John. Can, how can we stand firm? On things just like in this book. But the thing that once we know we right, and this instant, and this book had all the facts. But once we know we right, we take a stand, and, and we don't sway one side to the other. Things will get rough. Things gonna get rough. And it will probably get rougher for us as long as we stay here in this world. But if we right, and we know we right, now we gotta be right. We gotta know we right. We got to know we're doing the things of God. Then we don't let nobody or nothing keep us from doing what the Lord has called us to do. But we have to make sure that we're right ourselves. You see, when that happened to those people, it came, they said fear came upon them. And they wondered what they had just witnessed. They said, what did, said, did you, what did we just see? What did we just, ex- just experience? What did we just do? Good Lord, so what in the world has happened? And they, and they know that they, they said this is special. They were witness, they knew they were witnessing something special. And something that only their God, the God of Israel, could bring to pass. And now this is something. And then at times, you know, like, like I said, God may give us something to do. And what, what he, what he put upon us to do, it may be out of the ordinary, maybe different from something, something special, something that we hadn't had to do before. If you study, you got to study that word. Stay in the word. You got to know what what the word says, and then you got to know how how to discern so that when someone brings you a word, an ordinary person could bring you a word, and it could be a word from God. And a person of position could bring you a word, and it'd be a word from them. So we have to make sure that we we listen to the word, that we that we examine the word, and not necessarily the person who bring the word, because we don't know who God wants to send a word by. Amen. Amen. So we don't, since we don't know that, we have to test the word. We have to see is that word from God. We have to, do we only know that? Uh, we know the word. Yeah, we know the word. Once we know the word, you know, you can't tell us nothing. Cause we know that we know that we know. Mm-hmm. And once we know it's from God, 
we can make every effort. We should make haste to do it. And, we, and you know, remember one thing, you need to know his voice. And then you know who he is with. Mm -hmm. Are there any comments? Yes, friend, I just want to say I thank God for you, and I thank God for giving you that awesome lesson. You've done an awesome, awesome job this morning, so we don't need to go behind you. But what I need to say is everything you said was so true. And with, just like uh, Zachariah and uh, Elizabeth, God had been dealing with them. That's why she named that baby John. When he, uh -huh. his tongue was stuck, but when the angel went back to him, he loosened his tongue and he wrote, asked for that book and wrote on the paper, say his name will be John. So they, when you take self out of the picture, it ain't about nobody else but God. So long as you do what God said do, forget about the rest of the people, what they tell you and do what God said do, cause God is what he is, and he can do anything except fail. Amen. Mm -hmm. And this Nancy, what I got from it was that uh, sometimes God changes the order of things, uh -huh. and, and it's not for us to know when he going to make that change, but it's for us to follow through with what he said to do, such as like you were saying that they were trying to say Miss Elizabeth was out of order. But it was not so because God made that change. So uh, when right. God do things, it's not out of order. It's what he wanted to happen. So that's what I learned. Good. Well, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And then when they, they said, they said, we are stricken in the, in the age. It's uh -huh. not, it ain't nothing impossible for God to do. That's right. Not nothing. Uh-uh. Uh uh, so the, 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 it ain't nothing impossible. He can do anything except fail. That's right. And long as we don't fail him, we'll be okay. Amen. Are there any other comments? Just like they were saying, you know, uh, Elizabeth had a strong, strong mind and strong heart. That's why she. That's why she stood her ground. In this, in this, cause she knows that the Lord was with her and she won't want, she just, she won't want to fail. So that's how some she stuck with the Lord and stood her ground. That's right. Do we have any other comments? I say that's the way we should be today instead of being wishy-washy because somebody don't agree with us, we back away. But when you know you're right, like you said, Stand firm. Uh huh. And things will work out, and they'll work out the way God intended for them to. But if you wish you wash your weak and don't stand your ground, that can cause things not to go the right way. And then you look back and say, "Well, I should have done what that voice told me to do." Because uh -huh. the voice is God speaking to you, and you should do mm -hmm. what He tells you to do, and not because somebody don't agree with you. You just go and change what God has already told you to do. You gotta stand firm. That's right. And you won't, when you, when you make a, when you're doing something, you make a decision, you got to, first of all, you see what's right. You take a stand and you stand for what's right, regardless to who's against you, regardless to who agree with you, or who think you are a little person. No matter what, you do like Elizabeth, you just stand there. You take your stand and that's it. That's right. Because if you stand, God don't stand with you. Uh huh. Are there any other comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank you, man. So I love you, baby. Love thank you. Thank you. So you be working your butt off. I just thank God for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you make my, me feel good this morning. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Well, I agree with Francis. <laughs> mm -hmm. I enjoyed listening. Thank you. I'm glad you did. And each each Sunday, each week, I start my lessons. And Lord, 
let today be better than it was last Sunday. Give me, let me do better than I did the last time. I just keep praying and asking God to help me. He's an answering. Yes, he is. Thank the Lord. Uh, do we have any other comments? Yes, good morning. If not, good morning. Can yes, sir. Me? Uh, this is Brother Dan. Uh -huh. Um, I uh, enjoyed the message and all the comments. And um, I'm traveling where well, I'm at my destination now. But I just thank God for um, um, communication. Um, you know, the pandemic changed a whole lot of things. So I was able to yes. do a free conference call. I got my uh, iPad running in the back, doing it live, and made my travel to church um, uh, uh, great this morning. So I'm going in here and video this service for these people. But um, I just want to thank you. That was a nice ride to church. I mean, to, to the church, listening to the good message this morning, and I appreciate you. And you know, every round get higher and higher. I think every message you do hey. is better <laughs> than the one before. So I thank you. Thank you, thank you, and you just don't know uh, what you do for me. I appreciate you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Brother Dancing. Thank you. And if we want to make sure we get everybody, there any other comments? And if they are not, this concludes our Sunday school lesson for today. Amen. 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 Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> so, we, so we want to thank um, Mother Mom this morning for the song, Brother Faces for the prayer. And we do thank yes. our teacher this morning, this man, uh, Trustee Nancy Wood, for the lesson this morning. What a good lesson that she taught this morning. And so far, we just asked, I know everybody made some comments this morning, but we're going to ask someone from either church here. Say what we got out of the lesson this morning. Learn from the lesson this morning. Uh, Deacon Rich, in summary, I'd just like to say um, well done and that it's important to listen so that when God is speaking to you, uh, you'll recognize his voice because there'll be some other voices in there too. God knows our name and knows our voice, but we need to listen pray, uh, walk with God so that we will know his voice when he speaks to us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Thank you for coming in and making that remark this morning. Now we are here from our secretary this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Minutes of the Anderson Chapel, Anderson Stevens, Missionary Baptist Church, um, Sunday School in the Year of Our Lord. Hmm, not the year, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, minutes of the Anderson Chapel and St. Stevens, Sunday, Sunday School, <laughs> on the 11th day of December in the Year of Our Lord, 2022. The school will call um, to order at 10 a.m. by Dick and Rick. Um, a little time of Bethlehem was gone by Mother Barnes. Prayer by Reverend Saint. The um, scripture for today comes from Luke 1, 57 and 66, 76 to 79. The topic is Zechariah, Zechariah, Dean. The lesson was reviewed for 35 minutes by Trustee Wooden. Um, closing remarks were made by Trustee Williams, I mean, Trustee Pitt. All your officers remain the same. And Pastor Lewis, can you tell us how many in attendance? We had 14, uh, on the free conference call and 15 in the sanctuary. With a total of 29 in attendance. Back to you, Dickie <laughs> Uh, we want to thank our secretary this morning for the reading of the minutes. Are there any corrections this morning? If not, we'll receive the minutes as been read this morning. And we are going to close out this morning our Sunday school with the word Amen. 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 We're going to turn it over now to 
from lose. 